You know, it's been four years since our Granite Mountain Hotshot crew, 19 out of 20 of them were killed by the blaze they were fighting near, near Yarnell. That was June 30th of 2013. Well, last weekend, a movie was put out about them called Only the Brave. And it was showing here, I saw it, and um, it's called, again, Only the Brave. Very good, as you see. And with us today is a horse rescuer, a farrier, and a photographer, as well as the widow of the superintendent of our Granite Mountain Hotshots, Eric Marsh. Amanda Marsh, great to have you with us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Wow, it's wonderful to see you again. We knew each other in what seems like another lifetime. It was another lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot's happened. We were saying, thank heavens we can't see the future. We couldn't face it, probably. However, um, this is an amazing thing, a film. You've been to Hollywood, girl. And, um, you yes. know, Eric is played by Josh Brolin. And I thought he looked a tremendous bit like him. He really did. He really embodied him. And those Amazing. glasses, he just looked, he looked just like him in the movie. <laughs> that was probably hard. We'll talk about it. Yes. And then Jennifer Connelly, you know, played, played you. Yes, wow. she did. Totally amazing. How, what was it like having a film made about the hot shots and all of you? It was difficult at first. It was a difficult process to walk through because it's very emotional and it's really sad and it's really hard and to put so much faith and trust into people. Um, that I didn't know was tremendously hard and I had to really I had to really trust and have faith and accept and just move forward with it and and it an amazing outcome we have an amazing outcome with this movie it's a phenomenal movie um, let's take a little clip we, we've got a clip here let's take a look at the trailer for only the brave oh, you take this little stinker he's not a stinker Bye. You all are one of the best damn crews I've ever seen. Kick it off, Max Level! The SEAL Team 6 of firefighters. One, two. We saved all that. If this ain't the greatest job in the world, I don't know what is. Sooner or later, the fire's gonna come knocking at our hometown. What is that? This is it. Game time. It's not easy sharing your man with a fire. When this night sweeps over you, it's gonna feel like the end of the world. Take cover! Take cover! Come on! No matter what happens, no matter what's going on, this Granite Mountain family pulls together. Three, two, one! Only the Brave, the story of the Granite Mountain Hotshots. One piece of me. Come and get it. Um, saw it Sunday night. Packed out crowd, very appreciative crowd of the thing. Um, how, how did the movie come about? It wasn't based on a book or anything particularly, was it, Amanda? Well, I know that they, um, and, and I can't speak too much to this because I don't know the answer to that, okay. but um, I know that Brendan's book did play a part in it. I just don't, I'd, I'm not sure what that, how much that was. But it came about mostly because one of the producers, Mike Menchel, was returning from a trip overseas. And he was in the airport, and he was walking through the airport. And at every TV that he saw, he saw what was happening as he was walking through the airport. And he was so moved and so touched by that experience and by losing these guys that he wanted to create a movie to immortalize them, um, to bring them to life forever, to honor them. And he did. He did a very good job. I was coming home from a trip. We thought it was monsoon clouds. I said, no, it looks like fire. Looked it up. We were in Yarnell about three o'clock that day mm -hmm. and um, got the news later. I thought I thought People's Valley was going to get wiped, but it changed. Me too. And that was the whole crux of everything. But anyway, you were a consultant on the film. What yes. kinds of things were you able to help with, Amanda? I helped with our story. So anything that had to do with Eric out of his uniform and anything that had to do with um, myself, my storyline. And so I was able to give Josh a lot of Eric 
so that he could portray them, um, portray him in a very realistic fashion. And there were other people that helped with this movie as well. Pat McCarty was phenomenal. Brendan, of course, helped too. And Pat was instrumental, and, and so was Brendan in bringing, and, and there were other Granite Mountain hotshots on the movie too, um, and they were just instrumental in bringing Eric to life as well. So as a team, we were really able to create this epic, this epic human being in life. We were able to recreate him on the screen. That's phenomenal. We're yeah. going to take another look at a little clip that shows, um, shows Josh Brolin playing Eric. Sugarcoated, this first season as Hot Shots is going to be tough. We're going to be traveling all over the country. We're going to be working harder, going longer. So it's important that this Granite Mountain family pulls together and looks out for each other. Because we can't do this without your support. No soup could be prouder right now of his boys than I am of you guys. So to commemorate this occasion, I had some teas made up. Yeah. All right. Now you can only wear them if you're a hot shot. Right? Okay, so it's sleeping with a hot shot too. Okay. So Josh Brolin played your husband Eric. Yes. Uh, he said he's pretty close to you now. So what's it like having Josh Brolin as a friend? Well, it's more like having Josh Brolin as a big brother. He. It, was, it would have been impossible for me to have walked away from um, our a connection with him because of what he did, because of what I shared with him, and, and ultimately he felt the same way. And we're, we have a lot in common, and he's just a really sweet man, and his wife is amazing, and I feel very blessed. Well, he, to me, because I did not know Eric, but to me, Josh Brolin was Eric. He really, really portrayed him. And, it seemed like you felt like he very much brought your husband to life. I feel like he did an amazing job. He really, he worked with a linguist to be able to come up with this blended um, North Carolina, Arizona accent and worked really hard at it. And so when you hear him on the big screen, you hear Eric. I mean, the voice, the, 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 the voice itself is maybe just a little different, but not really. It's very, and the emotion. Yeah. You know, the emotion in there and how it, his voice breaks, that's, that's Eric. I, you know, and, and we felt that, really. I, I just uh, felt what a great leader he was and how passionate he was about what he did. How about being played by Jennifer Connelly, Amanda? <laughs> <laughs> well, I always joke to myself, you know, you, you think about, you know, you have these conversations, who would you play, who would play you in a movie someday if, you know, and... And I'm like, well, I know it would be Jennifer Connelly. Who, who knew? I, w I would have not picked that. I would not have. It's a, it's a tremendous honor. She's an incredible human being. She's so smart and passionate, and she's creative. And watching her morph into me, as she was just, she what? No cameras were even on her yet, and she was just working for the first time with these horses in this arena. And I, can, I could see her becoming me. I could, I could see myself in her. Well, and I can, see, I can see that that would have been a great pl uh, person to play as well, but that's gotta be an amazing thing. Um, so I, I always, it was so personal, yeah. Amanda. I mean, things about you and Eric specifically because that was, uh, the hot shots was the whole thing, but because he was the leader, and you were behind that man, you know, how'd that feel to have so much, uh, so many personal things, you know, to, to be portrayed on the big screen for millions of viewers? It feels like it, it's a bit relieving in a way because when, if I leave too much out or if I am absent too long, then people want to fill the, the spaces of my life in for me and they come up with things that aren't right and they're not real. And to help create Eric on the big screen, I just felt like my role had to be real and raw. And there's stuff that's, of course, that's not there, but, but so much of me is because, because that was the reality of my life. And I didn't want to do this movie just for the sake of doing this movie. I wanted it to be impactful to people and represent a population of others, which is wildland firewives, firewi structure firewives. This is a very hard life, and it needs to be showcased on the big screen if, if you know. Yeah. I felt that that was necessary. 
Yeah, I think when you answer the phone and it's Jesse Steed's phone. Um, oh, that happened. Well, yeah, Jenna, and, and you immediately you're awakened and it's like, what, what? Is Eric okay? What's, ha you know, I mean, you lived, yep. you could see that that was the life that you live, never knowing, always being afraid this would, would happen. Yeah. Um, so, you like the film. I yes. think that's probably, you, <laughs> you think Eric would like the film too. I think he would be tickled to know that he was played by Josh Brolin. Wow. Well, it, it's a magnificent. I thought it was a, an amazing thing, a great tribute to them, and certainly, um, I think heals a lot of a lot of our hearts because you know we're not you, thank goodness, but we um, were there with you on that. So you have done in the wake of this tremendous loss, you have a foundation, Eric yes. Marsh Foundation for Wildland uh, Fighters. Tell us about that. I created this foundation out of the ashes of the Yarnell Hill fire, and I feel like I was being guided to do it and I didn't even know what the implications would be, how far reaching it would be. But this foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit and we raise money for next of kin of wildland firefighters killed in the line of duty. And we also help guys that are struggling from PTSD from fatalities on the fire line. So wow. we really, we have big hearts and we really want to help people. And it has, it has given people a platform for healing. And it's tremendous. I get messages all the time from people that just want to share their story or their connection. And it's, it's been an amazing journey. Well, and we have information on the screen about that so people mm -hmm. can, you know, find out. But it's a tremendous thing for you to rise from the ashes that way and, and reach out and help others. And I've always admired you for that, Amanda. This Thank you. This is probably the hardest thing a human being could, could go through. Hey, love your shirt. Thank uh, you. Tell us the motto because this is the, for the, the Eric Marsh Foundation for Wildland fight, uh, Firefighters. Firefighters, uh-huh. But it says something in Latin. Essay quam videri, to be rather than to seem. It is the crew motto. I'd say they lived up to that. I would say they did. Amanda Marsh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a tremendous experience and um, the movie, Only the Brave. Check it out. Check it don't out. Don't be sorry. All right, don't go away. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back on Sandy and Friends. Oh, I, just, I was just saying I knew this was coming when I called you and asked her what your comfort level was. I could just feel it, you know? And, you know.